Hello, I'm Dr. Shorman of EMG and Rehabilitation Physicians and Shorman. Today, we are going to be learning about the EMG, also known as electromyography, and the nerve test. An EMG is a test evaluating the nerves within the peripheral nervous system, as well as specific potential metabolic abnormalities within the muscles of the body. Often, the test helps us make a particular definitive diagnosis, such as carpal tunnel syndrome. Just as importantly, the test is also used to rule out potential bad actors that would require more acute medical attention. Additionally, it is used to assess the prognosis of a presentation, assessing the potential for healing, which can help your managing physician make the most appropriate decisions when it comes to your continuing care. Indeed, there is quite a bit posted on the internet about this test, and not all of it is positive. Today, I hope to walk you through the experience in our office in the hopes of calming any potential fears about your upcoming procedure. First and foremost, preparation. There really isn't much to consider in preparation for this test. Ultimately, the less debris on the limb being tested, the more accurate results we will obtain. Also, the less debris on the limb, the lower the stimulation that is required to obtain ideal results. Please attempt to avoid placing lotion or skin care products upon the limbs being tested. Plainly stated, the cleaner the limb about to be tested, the better it is for the physician and the patient alike. Other than active infection within the limb being tested, there really are no contraindications for the procedure. In an attempt to answer commonly presenting questions, there is no need to hold blood thinners for this test. Additionally, spinal cord stimulators, cardiac defibrillators, pacemakers are not a contraindication for this test. At this point, I will attempt to simulate a typical patient experience in our office. Upon entering the office, our assistant will take the temperature of the limb being evaluated. Depending on the temperature, we may apply a heating pad to your hands or feet as cold limbs can potentially turn normal results abnormal. Ultimately, you will be asked to disrobe and don a gown which will allow access to the limb or limbs being evaluated. There are two parts to the test here today, the stimulation part and the pin part. With the first part of the test, the stimulation part, essentially I will be placing these electrodes down low on your hand and I end up stimulating nerves at different distributions within your hand and arm. When I do that, I will see little blips on the screen here that will tell me how fast the nerve's traveling, how big of an amplitude we get, and from there I can tell whether the nerves themselves are acting healthy or unhealthy. We learn to do the test initially by doing them on ourselves and back and forth on colleagues, so the best description of the stimulation I can give you is probably that of a rubber band snapping against the skin. It's annoying, but well tolerated. These next couple of nerves are motor nerves, which means it's going to make you move a bit more. Similar intensity stimulation, just a bit of a bigger motion attached with it. With this one, I'm going to be pushing up by your bicep tendon. You're going to feel your wrist flex. We should be done with the stimulation part. Now we are going to move on to the second part, the pin part. With this part, what tends to make it most comfortable for folks is typically when I have you flex or activate your muscles, the less you move, the more comfortable it is for you. The easiest way I've found to do that is to have you start off in a neutral position, which is essentially palm down, elbow by your side, and you're as relaxed as can be. In that position, ultimately, I'll end up pushing on you in different places. If you push back against me with equal pressure, you end up activating the right muscle, but not moving too much. With the second part of the test, the pin part, essentially I have pins about the diameter of that 
of an acupuncture pin that I insert into different muscles. Initially you're relaxed, then I have you activate or flex those muscles. When you do that, I see primarily I'm listening to waveforms on the screen. They give me an idea of how well nerve signal is traveling from the major nerves in your hand and arm, as well as the nerve roots in your neck, down into the muscles they are supposed to send signal to. If the signal is interrupted, it can give us an idea if it is acutely interrupted, chronically interrupted, acute on chronic, also an idea about severity and prognosis. Ultimately, there is a lot of information we get from this test. Once I get the information, I have to sit back, analyze what I've got, compare it to normals for age, sex, and size. Thus, unfortunately, you end up leaving the office today without too much information. Typically, within about two business days, we will have the formal results put together and sent to your referring doctor. I thank you for your time and attention. Here's hoping this bit of information manages to provide some education, clarification, and ultimately helps mitigate unnecessary fears associated with this test. Finally, here's hoping you and yours are well.